So KNN is a very simple non-parametric model, uh, and it is inspired by this um, optimal decision rule. So recall that the optimal kind of the theoretically best possible model uh, looks like this: is f hat is the expected value of y given the observed value of of x. But of course, we do not know what it is. So the only thing that we can hope for is to somehow approximate it. And well, the idea is that we are going to replace the expected value with a mean value. And since it is very seldom that our um, feature vector is precisely the observed value, so in, instead of taking the average value of all uh, observations over the instances where the feature vector is precisely x, we are going to take some neighborhood of x. So if this is x, so some, some neighborhood of x, and whatever observations fall into that neighborhood, we are going to take, uh, we are going to measure the observed y for those, uh, uh, for th those data points, and we are going to take the average, right? So this is KN for regression. So for classification, it is inspired by uh, the Bayes rule in pretty much the same way as uh, KNN for reg regression is inspired by the optimal decision rule for regression. Okay, um, so how does it work? So given some observation x, so x should be like a new observation. Usually it is a new observation. It's, it does not belong to, to the existing data. Um, so n of x is going to denote a neighborhood of x. And there are two possible choices for that. So it's either the set of all existing data points within a fixed distance from x. So it is this picture. So there are three examples. So the first example is, stop. So our x can be here or here or here, right? So it can be minus one, one. Uh, 0 minus 1 or 1, 1. And we take um, a circle or a ball or a fixed radius, and we take all observations that fall into the, this radius. So the number is going to be different. So um, like for this, um, the, the, this circle, that there is just one observation. It's here. For this circle, there, there's going to be one, two, three, four. So another possible way to do it, and the other possible way is more popular, um, is, is as follows. We just take, uh, we look at all possible data points, we sort them according to the distance to x, and we take k nearest. So, which is why the method is called k-nearest neighbors. But then, of course, the, um, in areas where our data is sparse, the radius of the, this neighborhood is going to be bigger. So, in uh, um, this example, I think k is, I think it's 4. So, it's like 1, 2, 3, 4 here. So, 1 two, three, well, in, in this case, there are two that are like almost on the boundary. So I guess that probably one of them is exactly on the boundary and the other one is slightly out of the boundary, but there are still four of them. And for this neighborhood is, is also four. Okay, um, now, uh, yeah, usually we apply Canon with fixed k rather than uh, the, this fixed radius. So, but in either case, the model's prediction is just the average value of um, of the observed. So, so the, this is observed uh, observed outcome, observed response for all x i that belong to the given neighborhood. Right. So we take all po points that. Uh, sit in our neighborhood. For each of them, we measure the, we look at the observed output. So 
and then we just take the average. Right, so for classification, what we do is we say that, um, so our estimated conditional probability is that um, our response variable belongs to class K, is going to be just um, the fraction. So we take our neighborhood, so we take all possible points. Among these points, we take those that belong to class K, let's say this point, this point, this, this, and this, and this, they belong to class K, and we just take the fraction of points within the given neighborhood that belongs to class K. So in, in, the, in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, six points uh, belong to class K. One, two, three, four, five belong to non-K. So the total number of points is 11. So in this, in, in this case, K is, is 11. Okay, uh, now let us go through a few simulated examples, just, just to understand how this method works. Uh, this, this is not real data, this is simulated data. So, oh, which means the following, right? So first I came up with some decision boundary, right? So decision boundary means that the, the, there is a, so there are two, um, two predictors here, x1 and x2. And the, the, there is a true decision boundary. So the, 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 this curve is a curve along which the probability of yes is the same as the probability of no. So along the, this curve, the probability of yes is the same as the probability of no is one half. Right? So below the, this curve, it is more, more likely to, to have yes as output. Above this curve is more likely to have no as output. So suppose that this is observed data, right? So um, circle means no and triangle means yes. And you see that below the curve, there are more triangles than, 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 than circles, which is consistent with uh, the way. And above the, this blue curve, there are more circles than, than triangles. So above the curve, no is more likely than, than yes. Below the curve, yes is more likely than no. But the data is still random, so that there are still, by by pure chance, some uh, no uh, on the wrong side of the curve and some yes on the wrong side of the curve. Too. So um, now, what is the decision boundary for k equals one? Right. So if k equals one, it means that if we if our point is say here, then what we do we take the nearest just one nearest uh, observation point to this, and the nearest observation is would be this. And then we take the, the, the value at that nearest observation. And since it's a circle, it's no. While if our uh, new data is, say, here, then again, we take the nearest point, and the nearest point would be a triangle. So we predict yes instead. Right, so here I colored um, areas where we predict no and areas where we predict yes by different colors. So, and our model would be perfect uh, if the uh, boundary between the two colors would be the same as this blue curve, which is not the case. And what we see here is that if k equals one, which means we only use one neighbor for, for prediction, then the decision boundary is, is kind of, is, is very, very curved. And of course, in particular, um, there are some um, some observations that are on the wrong side of the decision of the true true boundary by by pure chance. And around every one of them is going to be like a little area. So this this is the area where the point every point here is going to be uh, nearer to this um, uh, triangle than to a twenty circle. And my, my point being is that if k equals one, then the decision boundary is going to be very complicated. And the higher k is, the smoother the decision boundary is going to be. Right? So here k equals three. So now we see that our this, the uh, predicted decision boundary is more or less kind of follows the uh, the, the true boundaries is already better. So only there are two uh, two incorrect. Um, 
little um, little spots. So one is here. So this is probably because yeah, of these three triangles. So for every new observation that is here within its um, neighborhood, we are going to have two uh, triangles and one circle. So which is why the predicted output is going to be um, yes rather than the no. But the higher K is, the smoother the decision boundary is going to be because we're going to average among many um, observations. And this is going to, to smoothen it out, right? So now when K equals seven, so you see that the decision boundary is, is, is actually quite good, right? So um, it's almost everywhere it follows our, our true boundary. So expect, except for these little, uh, little um, spots. But now if K is even bigger, then our decision boundary is, is probably even, even smoother, but now it kind of straightens out. So now it's too, becomes too simple. It becomes uh, even smoother and even simpler, even, even straighter than the, the true, true boundary. So if K equals 15 and, um, oops, sorry, the, the, the last one is when K equals 25. And here the uh, decision boundary of our KNN model is, is like almost a straight line, which is again misses misses the, the, the true boundary. So my point being is that um, given on the nature of your data, so that there is always the, the best value of k, but you cannot really know in advance what the best value of k is. So in this um, in this case, K equals seven seems to be the best choice, but in some some other, if if we had more data, then probably higher value of K would be better. If we had less data, then probably a smaller value of K would be better. Okay, so I hope it is clear. So now uh, a little quiz about K and.